I know, I know. This is a bad idea, and no one would ever do this. But I'm doing it. Because I want to do it. What happens when you put a 13700K against Intel's weakest stock cooler? We're going to find out. And we're going to see if we can make it work. I'm using this Asus Z690 ITX motherboard, which, by the way, barely fits, you'll see. Um, and installing this cooler on it is kind of a pain because Asus uses both holes for new and old sockets, and those wobbly pins can accidentally drop into either one. I did get it set up, though, eventually. Uh, it took a lot longer than I'd like to admit. And, uh, yeah, with the 79... What is that card? The 7900 XT? Uh, I shouldn't be CPU limited in at least a bunch of situations. Here it is running, and... Um, well, I'm going to turn the sound off because it gets pretty darn loud. Now, just sitting at the desktop idling, I was pushing some serious thermal limits. I mean, it was doing updates and things, and I started downloading games that made it worse, uh, installing drivers, and then when I actually loaded up Apex Legends, I went right to the max. Uh, it was pretty bad. So I skipped playing the game at all and just went straight back to the BIOS to thermal limit and power limit the CPU. I turned it all the way down to 65 watt part levels and also set a 75 degree cap. I was hoping that I would hit the power limits before I hit the cap, but I actually didn't. I still hit the cap with this cooler. The nice thing was, in Apex Legends at 1080p maxed out, I was still hitting the 300 frames per second cap. So I decided to play around for a little while, see if I could keep that uh, at 300 frames per second while running around, jumping around, doing stuff. You'll have to forgive me. I haven't played in a long time, so uh, my aim and things might be pretty bad, and I might be hitting wrong buttons. Also, the uh, AMD overlay, I forgot to turn that off before I started, and that tends to get in the way when you're you know, sliding through doorways and things. Uh, if you use the default hotkeys anyways. But uh, you can see here it maintains a pretty stable 300 frames per second at 1080p. So I haven't really lost the gaming experience. I just lost the performance. Which, I mean, it's that's a kind of a weird distinction, I guess. <clears throat> now, before I go too much further, I do want to point out that I ran Cinebench R23 on this and only scored around 14,000 points. Uh, that's barely over a Ryzen 5 7600. That's the lowest 7000 series Ryzen processor. So, um, I mean, it's not worth it. If you're gonna get the roughly the same performance as about a 200 watt part, don't spend money on the $400 one. But I could see a reason for having this set up. Please, hear me out. If you bought this CPU, and you weren't quite ready for it, but wanted to use it right away. Sure, go ahead. Power limit, throw out the cheap heatsink that you've got right on there, and run it safely until you've got a proper cooler for it. Or if you really have to temporarily cram it into a tight space, yeah, go ahead. But other than that, I don't see a reason why you would buy this over just the cheaper lower power CPU and run that one at full blast. Save the money, put it towards something else, like a way better video card. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. It was just some silly fun for me. And I won't see you in the next one because that's not how video works. Have a good weekend. Or weekday. I don't care.